between Amulet Titan and Salt Eye Titan. I'll tell you this much, Matthew Dilks does not believe Salt Eye Titan is a very good deck. In case no. you miss in case you miss that memo. He's not a believer in that deck at all. How effusive and specific will Matthew Dilks be discussing decks that he thinks are good? I don't know. Kind of tough to get a word out of him. He sort of speaks in generalities. How detail, much detail is he willing to go into for decks that he thinks are bad? He'll talk about it a lot. A, a favorite topic of conversation. Yeah. If he does not respect your deck, he will let you know, which I'm totally fine with. Love it. Got no problem with that at all. I'm struggling to know how you would root against him. There's just too many moments. It's, he hasn't even been playing on the tour that I long. I mean, he's your... There's already too many stories. He is stories. your favorite Magic player. Yeah. That much is clear. The windmill off the top rope, a braid on the ensnaring bridge, announcing destroy target artifact against someone with no creatures. Yeah. <laughs> I decide what stock and 2-0 in Cordy in seven minutes or whatever. <laughs> And that's just what we hear about. Yeah, There's we all know. these things going on all the time you don't even know about. Yeah, we don't know every single thing that's happening. We just know that this has happened. Yeah. And also playing his deck at an alarmingly, alarmingly fast pace uh, and perfectly. And at the Players' Championship, described, self-identifies. He says, you know what? I'm actually pretty casual. Which so is also an incredible thing to say. So he says. So he says. Is it true? Who knows? I respect the man's confidence, his gusto, his whatever other word you want to use. I respect all of it. I truly do. Big young to get started here. <laughs> <laughs> legend. Absolute legend. This is your favorite magic player. I, I, I mean... <laughs> That I decide what stock is one of the best I've ever heard. Because it's true. And it's also true, yeah. yeah. That's part of the reason it's so great. These players are going to finish shuffling up. Games will be underway here in just a moment. Keep in mind, next weekend, you and I won't be there, but a little Knoxville action. Going to be fun. If you were Dilks' teammate, would you ever ask him for advice? Good God, no. Leave that man alone. <laughs> 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 I'm sure he's thinking right now, what kind of question is that that you just asked me, Will? Right. <laughs> Let's do it. Once upon a time, take a look. All right, it'll be breeding pool. Let's go back to Zach Allen. Now, when these two first played earlier this weekend, this match went long time. Long time. Mm -hmm. Zach Allen, Matthew Dilks going back and forth and back and forth, and eventually Zach Allen was able to find his Crater Hoof Behemoth alongside all of his zombie tokens from Field of the Dead to get the W. As they had Field of the Deads on each side, they were generating a ton of zombies, but no one could break through. Dilks was able to. Excuse me. Allen was able to. Now this is a Radiant Fountain and what I would call a very slow start once upon a time here for Zach Allen. All right. Simic Growth Chamber. Now remember, these are Primeval Titan decks with Field of the Dead in mind. Neither playing, neither player playing Valakut. Both players looking to ramp quite a bit. Now, if Dilks' start looks like this, then I am led to believe, as there's a Simic Growth Chamber, that Dilks has an Azusa. 
So uh, a, a helpful way to think about these decks is that Dilk's deck is primarily a combo deck with a backup plan of Field of the Dead. And Alan's deck is primarily a Field of the Dead deck with a combo as a backup. There's Cavern of Souls, Castle Garenbrig, now an Explorer. Giant on the Cavern, and Dilk's will pass the turn back. He didn't play a land off the Explorer, which leads you to believe he doesn't have one, but you have to imagine he has a Primeval Titan. Or a way to get one Summoner's Pack would get the job done, yep. of course. There's four mana for Allen. A couple secure Tribe Elders. So Zach Allen will have the mana to do Primeval Titan things next turn, but he doesn't have it this turn. So we head over to Dilks. Show me a 6-6, six, six, Matty. Otherwise, your draw is not very good. Now, for what it's worth, I don't think it's going to be a hasty Titan. So no, that's a bit usually that requires uh, Amulet of Vigor to pull mm -hmm. off. How about we test the waters with a little Nazus attack? Just test where Alan's at. Oh, really? Just knock on the front door. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What's that going to accomplish? Just seeing what's going on. Okay. 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 A little how you do. <laughs> any, other, any other cliches you want to <laughs> throw out here? or I mean, you're called to make. Yeah. I'm just here with you. That's all. My, all late, right. my late grandfather used to go to the flea market a lot. He used to describe the process of hackling. As give him a would you take? <laughs> Send in that Azusa. I don't even, That's I don't, a would you take? I don't even know. That's not even a word. A yeah, would that, you take? Yeah, it's a, a, a sort of compressing would you take. <laughs> no, no, I. Okay. Would you take yeah. one point of no, damage no, for sure, no reason? Sure, sure. A would you or, take? Or, uh, yeah, give him a would you take. Yeah. Looks like, uh, I don't know, it doesn't look like Dilks is availing himself of that, but, no. you know. Simic Growth Chamber, Field of the Dead. This will be, keep in mind he has Azusa. He hasn't played a land yet, so Bajuka Bog will be land number one, Field of the Dead token. Growth Chamber. You're just saying, Two you know, times. I'm going to pick up the Growth Chamber itself for some more zombies. Man, that's not a bad turn. Oh, yeah. Would you take? Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I don't respect it. I, you know, I was a fan before. He lost me a little bit there. I guess there's some chance that Alan just double blocks and passes priority, and then it looks extremely bad. Why is that bad? So this is a 1-2, right? Yeah, great. I kill, like, one of your things and you don't get a land in a ramp mirror? But the Azusa might be just long-term way more valuable. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. I would have I would have I would have lit him up. You saw what I did last night with that fervent champion against Steel Leaf champion. I ain't afraid. Yeah, someone's out there. We don't know who you are, but trust me, you got embarrassed in our room last night. You took one. You took one for no reason. Did you win the game easily after that? I ended the game at minus 19. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And they ended the game at 19. Cedric Capone started, Cedric Capone started on Atlanta Worlds and the Steel Leaf champion. And uh, Cedric had turn one that uh, invitational <laughs> goblin, raging goblin. Oh, yeah. And turn two plays a second land on tap and attacks in. And just is hollering for me to come over. <laughs> Shows the opponent not, not blocking L first and last point of damage. <laughs> you me. better, you better <laughs> believe it, baby. Did not come close to entering combat after that turn. It's all right. I got that <laughs> point. Primeval Titan here for Zach. Uh, Gonna get some zombies now with fields. But fields you know of what? Dead. You know what? You coward. For one moment there, you were the butt of every joke in our room. I won the yeah, exchange. Exactly. Will Pulliam, he won game one against Daniel Jessup. Very quickly, Amy will tighten up a game against Simic Urza. And Edgar Magish, Harlan Fear, unsurprisingly, they are going to be duking it out for a little while. Salti Urza, Bant Snowblade. That's not a quick one, folks. So we're going to head back over to Dilks, who, all right, how does Matt, after he pays the Summoner's Pack, get himself out of this situation? Because Zach Allen's going to be making more zombie tokens over time than Dilks does. And Allen has the Game Breaker in Crater of Behemoth that Dilks does not. 
That's the question Dilks has to Right. I mean, Dilks got a little bit of an advantage insofar as being the one to go first with Primeval Titan is a huge deal. He is disadvantaged insofar as if both players are sort of generating resources and generating a little bit of extra value and making some zombies and what have you, Allen is favored if the game takes that kind of shape for the reason that you mentioned. Crater Hoof Behemoth just blows the doors off of any game that takes that sort of shape. So even though uh, Dilks has gotten to go first with Primeval Titan, that's a powerful thing. Uh, there's still a burden on him to get the game over with pretty quickly because of that Crater Hoof Behemoth. Interesting note here, too, is that attacking with the Primeval Titan on Dilks' side, yes, it would get some lands and some tokens. It is a little bit risky because three zombies can just triple block the Primeval Titan, which means Dilks would be without his, but Zach Allen would still have his. Yes. And so that's a little bit concerning, too, and I think that's what Matthew and Will are talking about right now is... Is this sort of exchange worth it? Because, again, over time, Zach Allen is the better Field of the Dead deck. Yes, he has more, just kind of generally more lands and more land synergies, and then Critter Hoof Behemoth. And Dilks is without Amulet of Vigor, so there's no real threat of him being able to generate some bursty combo kill. Trigger here, the Primeval Titan. Vesuva. That's going to be copying a Field of the Dead almost assuredly. Now we'll see what the other one's going to, what the other land he wants to get is. Go to Tulare West. All right. Now remember, Azusa is on the battlefield right now and has not been played yet, so. Go up and down, up and down if we'd like. That hasn't occurred with Simic Growth Chamber. All right, so predictable blocks. Primeval Titan's going to get in front of one zombie. A zombie will get in front of the other zombie. Three zombies are going to get in front of Primeval Titan. None of this is a surprise. Dilks will get a little bit of damage through. But he's got to generate... Even more zombies now. In a meaningful way. So they're secure a tribe scout. All right. Does he want to pick up a different land here? I think is what he's asking. Will Pulliam and himself right now. Because he can just he can bounce the Teleria West and make a bunch of zombies over time. That's what he's gonna do. So now he's got Okay, he's Explains exactly. Yeah. I'm just gonna I'm gonna play Grow Chamber, trigger, pick up Grow Chamber, redo it. So that's six, ten. That'll be ten two twos. And if Alan wants to keep up, he might have to make the same risk with that primeval type getting in the red zone, and then uh, that gives Stokes the opportunity to block himself. There you go. So on the whole, Dilks has thirteen two two zombies against an opponent that is at fourteen. This field of the dead card. Not bad, huh? A lot of power at a very low opportunity cost. Thought the opportunity cost was higher than it was. It's prime. Mm, Zach can count first. I thought it may be prime time. Also worth noting here is Zach takes this turn. Mm -hmm. Dilks does have a copy of Pack Negation in hand. You got a little bit of cover. Now there's a cavern, so any creature here is going to be good to go. Depends but, uh, on the creature. Any good creature. Sure. That cavern's aiming giant. So, so you can counter big hooves if it comes to it. There you go. All right, Vesuva and Field of the Dead. Again, Alan is the better Field of the Dead deck. As you see him easily create eight zombies. Dilks will block with all of his zombies. He'll lose three of them, so he's down to ten total. And this is why, as you can probably tell at home, and you can as well there, partner, why the first time these two played, the first game took such a long time. It's just a lot of this. 
Yeah, one field of the dead plus three land drops a turn versus three fields of the dead and one land drop a turn. That's a recipe for a lot of trading. Yeah. Yeah, it is. is there's Elvish Rejuvenator. There'll be a trigger. Zach Allen will take a look at the top five cards. And he sees four land and a Boreal Grazer. And he gets to put one of these lands from the Rejuvenator onto the battlefield tapped. It'll be a swamp. 16 zombies now here for Zach Allen. To Dilks' 10. He'll play an Oko. Is that one worth fighting over? It is close, but... The ability to make 3-3 three, three Elks, how key is that? I don't think much swapping is going to be going on. Making Azusa into an Elk is notable. Well, that slows down the pace here of uh, Dilks being able to um, use the Simic Growth Chamber to make more zombies. Mm -hmm. So Allen should have an edge. The problem here from Allen's side is he's kind of out of cards. He might not have another way to really do very much. He might not even have another land for next turn, for all we know. Makes you wonder if that turn there from Dilks not pacting that Oko, if that's a mistake or not. Because can Dilks keep up with the generation of zombies now that he doesn't have the ability to say, Growth Chamber, Growth Chamber, Growth Chamber. He can place him at Growth Chamber's land drop and then secure a Tribe Scout. But he was doing much better than that previously. I'm guessing that it's just too... Too likely there's another Oko coming to fight over it and too modest. I'm, but, I mean, I think it was right on the line. Dux definitely gave it a pause. Consider countering it. Decided against. Dilk's going to attack here with 10 zombies. They're all at Zack. Zack is going to block with 10. So Zack's going to fall down to six zombies to Dilks' zero. All right, so Dilks now is going to float mana for Simic of Fort Teleria West, play Simic Growth Chamber, trigger, get Teleria West back in hand, now transmute it, go get presumably Summoner's Pact. There you go. Now there is the prime time. Got to figure out how he wants to cast it. And what he wants to go get with it. He's played his land for the turn. Worth noting, it was that Simic Growth Chamber earlier. And now we got to see, I mean, the, the best thing would be to get Field of Dead or some card analogous to it, like another copy of Vesuva. Well, he's got his Vesuva and his Field of Dead on the battlefield, so it's going to be Boros Garrison and Teleria West. There will be a Boros Garrison trigger. Both players with six zombies right now. Remember that Dilks is going to have to pay his pact on his next turn, assuming he gets another one, which I'd be surprised if he didn't. Looks like Boros Garrison is going to go to the hand, which means that Matt is going to keep a bounce land available. And he'll pass the turn back. So this is a once upon a time here for Zach Allen. He's on the hunt for a primeval titan, you have to imagine. This might be good enough to, to pact of negation here, because you can't stop a primeval titan that comes off the once upon a time, mm -hmm. but you can stop once upon a time. And... Dilks is looking at that once upon a time right now and thinking about it. Or excuse me, that pack negation and thinking about countering it, so he will. So now he's going to have to pay blue pack and green pack on his turn, which he has plenty of mana to do. And now he needs Matthew Dilks, excuse me, he needs Zach Allen to draw some bad ones. I think it was just a land. Okay. Oko is going to turn that into a 3-3. A land means a few more zombies. Four more to be in fact. Ten to six in the zombie race. Dilks is going to make it 10-8. Beast with the cavern, for what it's worth.
And Dilks decides with the Boros Garrison bounce trigger, he'd actually like to pick up Simic Growth Chamber as opposed to Boros Garrison or any other land. So now he's going to spend his time paying for his packs. Secure Tribe's got his untapped. All those lands are tapped on the upkeep. Back to Dilks we go. Secure Tribe's got appears to have been the draw. Remember that Zach Allen is out of cards right now, so he's just playing off the top of his deck. I don't know how much Dilks really has left over at this point, but uh, his position's pretty strong here. I mean, he's the one with, with a guaranteed ability to make some zombies a turn. Allen just playing off the top of the deck. It's worth noting, too. There are some very, very bad draws here for Zach Allen. Mm -hmm. Something like a Boreal Grazer is pretty poor. Another Oko. But you could say, you could make the argument that a Boreal Grazer just turns into a 3-3 Elk. So, it's not the worst draw in the world. It's just not keeping your head above water against the uh, zombies that, that Dilks is generating. Mm -hmm. So there are your trades. Zombie War, 2-2. Two 4-2. to two. Four to two. Two tapped, two untapped. Dilks with a green mana floating is going to play Secure Tribe Scout, I believe, yes. And Tribe Scout can, of course, put the Simic Growth Chamber onto the battlefield on the end step. It's an island here for Zach Allen. Of course, he just has to play it. He has nothing else to do. And now it's just a decision how he wants to use his Oko. I guess turn a 1 1 to a 3 3. He wants to make a food. Sure. Any change here for Dilks on what he picks up from the Bounce Land trigger? And so he'll make some zombies, of course. But now the question is, is there something he wants to pick up? And it looks like he's just going to stick with Simic Growth Chamber in hand. So six zombies total coming into this turn. You see the zombie war, six to six. And we go back to Matthew Dilks. Azusa is a good draw. With that, plus a bounce land, plus the Skur Tribe Scout, he gets to start pulling way ahead here on zombie generation. Easily going to outpace Allen, making uh, one trigger a turn, even if Allen is fortunate enough to draw a land for the foreseeable future. And now Dix is going to do what we saw him do a little bit earlier, which is play some in Girls Chamber, get back to Larry West, transmute, go get Summoner's Pact, probably go get Titan. When he goes and gets Titan, that Titan will get a bounce land alongside it. And he might actually even have the ability here to get Slayer Stronghold and have an attack with the Titan as well. Well, also, even if, even if he can't couple together a kill this turn, he's now at a spot where the, the Oko is overtaxed. You need to answer both Azusa and Primeval Titan immediately. And you can only answer one. Dux is going to get a Gruel Turf, as well as a Slayer Stronghold. There will be a Bounce Land trigger. He'll pick up the Slayer Stronghold. He'll put the Slayer Stronghold onto the battlefield via the Secure Tribe Scout. He'll activate the Slayer Stronghold. Zombies and Primeval Titan are going to attack. Primeval Titan, of course, has a little bit of additional power trigger this I think it might be time for another bounce land plus a Teleri West if he wants to keep going down that road it's been a familiar and powerful one here for Dilks there's your bounce land maybe maybe not Rarely is he this unsure of himself. I will say that. Pretty rare to play a game this deep. Usually you're either out of it or you've comboed out by now. Of actually just playing a long game on the battlefield is not that common for this deck. Sunhome Fortress of Legion and Selesnia Sanctuary are the weapons of choice off this primeval, primeval Titan attacking 
trigger. This Lesnar Sanctuary is going to return the Simic Growth Chamber. It is really concerning that I know all the names of these cards. Oh, uh, I think that I probably could get them. I'm really just, it's, sometimes you just, you think about it a little bit. How you just. What your brain is taken up with? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it Rakdos Cranarium? That's correct. Demir Aqueduct? That is also correct. Uh, Golgari Rock Farm? That is also correct. Hmm. Blue Red? Is it Boiler Works? Blue White. I don't know if I have that one. That's the one I thought you were going to miss. That's the one. Um. Some blocks will take place. Zombies are going to be some trading. Don't have it. Of course you don't. I had it. It's Azorius Chancery. Chancery. Uh, um, do you have Orzov? Uh, a, is it Orzov Cathedral? No, it's not. No. Sanctuary? No. No, I don't have it. Basilica. Basilica! Oh, it's tough. It's tough. Uh. It's, it's, tu it's tough out here, knowing all these cards. It's That's not easy. Right. It's not easy. Someone's got to do it, Rob. Someone's got to do it. Brutal. No one said the work's easy, bud. No. Yo, Zach, what you got going on here? Uh, <laughs> not much of a battlefield. Got a draw step here, and yeah. now you're in the tank. <laughs> you want to tell me what's going on? Hoof him. 22 to 2. Yeah, that ain't it. Misty Rainforest is not going to do it. Mm. So it could make nine zombies, but nine is not going to be enough on this battlefield. Matthew Dilks up a game here over Zach Allen. Amulet Titan up one over Salt Eye Titan. We're going to the boards now. We're going to start with Zach Allen, who's got four Assassin's Trophy, two Ashot Dream Render. You know those are coming in. Two Dismember, two Mystical Dispute, two Tireless Tracker, two Veil of Summer, and additional copy of Oko, Thief of Crowns. Let's talk about it. Um, the Ashiox, as you mentioned, uh, Tireless Trackers, and I think Assassin's Trophies are likely to come in as well. We're going over to Dilks. The Amulet Titan Master with his three dismembers, three mystical disputes, two tireless tracker, a bunch of one of fun ofs, Reclamation Sage, Tectonic Edge, Explosives, Field of the Dead, Voice, excuse me, Force of Vigor, Radiant Fountain, Ramunap Excavator. Go, go, go. Uh, the Tectonic Edge. That, can, that cannot be it. The Field of the Dead. Okay. And the tireless trackers. I'm getting in that Ramunap Excavator too. Yeah. Bring it's a combo. It's a combo out. Well, I think uh, think being able to blow up opposing fields if these games go along matters. Definitely. Yeah. I think that matters. So some cards you're just not going to so – you get to swap lands for lands a decent amount here, I think, which is which is nice. Yeah, Allen's Primeval Titans are actually fairly manageable in a late game if you can keep field of the deck contained. It yeah. doesn't really have a secondary thing to do with them. So these players – Gonna shuffle up. Get ready here for game number two. You see on our scoreboard there in the middle, Harlan up a game over Edgar. Matthew Dilks up a game over Zach Allen. And Will Pulliam up a game over Danny Jessup. And if you take a look at all these names, Edgar, Harlan, Matthew, Zach at the Players' Championship just a handful of weeks ago at the Star City Game Center in Roanoke, Virginia. Daniel Jessup has played in it before. Will Pulliam is the only one who hasn't. But it wouldn't surprise me if he does this year if he plays a lot on the SCG Tour. And speaking of the tour, let's take a look at what they're playing for here in this final match. Now, the finalist, one of these teams is walking out here with $3,000. Mm -hmm. It's a good weekend. That's $1,000 ahead, most likely, depending on how they want to split it up. Winner, though, $7,500 for the team, $2,500 per person. SCG points, obviously very important if you follow the 2019 Race for the Players' Championship on the SCG Tour. These players are all qualified for our Invitational. That will take place in the Season 1 at the Berglund Center in Roanoke, Virginia. But the winner... Players Tour qualification in Charlotte. Place at Cryptic Commands, $2,500 ahead, 25 SG points. Season 1 Invitational qualification, a lot at stake here. Good tournament to win. Yes. Tell you what, good tournament to win. And I'm sure these players, whoever does win, would love to head to Charlotte later this year to play in that Players Tour Regionals. New organized play system announced by Wizards of the Coast. Q4 of last year. And I know the Magic community is getting geared up about. And the SD Tour is just one avenue to get there. For Matthew Dilks, it's another top eight. Could be another win. Mm -hmm. He played a lot of opens last year. 15, top eight at eight of them. 15 is and eight is an outlandish conversion rate. Yeah, that's right. With one win, 
Most of the work done in modern. Most of the work in modern done with this deck. Guess what? For 2020, one for one. Bang. Bang. And we made it, I would say, harder to top eight team opens now with only a top four. I decide what's stuck. That's correct. That is. <laughs> wow. You like that? As, as Kirk Cousins would say. You like that? That's uh, that's an all-time great line. I don't really know what else to say. There's nothing else to say. You just you just let it sit there. Yeah, let that marinate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I suggest you let that one marinate. Let that marinate a yeah. little bit. Think about think about the knowledge that just got dropped. Mm -hmm. Cannon will do. And as I mentioned, next weekend, mm -hmm. SAG Tour. Knoxville. Heads to Knoxville, returns to Knoxville for the first time in a handful of years. We were there last time we did it. I think that was 2015, by the way. The Volunteer State. Yeah. Only time I've ever been to Knoxville. Cool place. Knoxville was cool. I dug it. Locals were cool. Restaurants were great. Yeah. I have a vivid recollection of us eating some ice cream there. Yeah. Cab driver took me back to the, uh, to the airport at the end of that trip. Picked me up, was reading a newspaper while he drove, and uh, was spitting chewing tobacco into a can. I was like, you are so cool. <laughs> it's just, you got it all, you got it all figured out. Living his best life. I know. Yeah. I'll tell you what, paper. How am I supposed to get on a plane after that? Paper's well, not going to read itself. Could have just, I could have just. I I, bl I believe if I asked politely enough, I, he would have taken me under his ween wing. I, I could have learned the way, you know. Instead you could have just stayed in Knoxville. Instead, I went back to California. Bad call. Yeah. Should still be there. Yep. A little, little, little hot take here. California sucks. So big that I don't know how you just put it under any one, like, umbrella term. You yeah, know I, I, mean? I just did. It's like. It just, it's it's some, enormous. If someone said, like, oh, yeah, the, you know, America sucks it's like i don't know it's so big and disparate like yeah. i you know you can not like a particular part but it's really weird to sort you of you want to know a part i don't like what the part i drove through from los angeles to san jose uh you went from los angeles to san jose yeah bakersfield yeah north of bakersfield i drove all the way six and a half hours it was yeah it was horrible yeah it gives you that drive gives you some time to think I, and i did Look around, nothing really going on. Made me wonder how there's so much open land. So much mm. farmland. Yeah, it's true. Stank. You think of you think of California as being just all yeah, it's LA and San Francisco it's and not, Oakland and San Diego. It's not. No. Most of the state. Found you had out the east, hard way. You had you had an hour east to LA, you had an hour north of LA, and there's not a whole lot going on no. until you hit Bakersfield. Yeah. A lot of land. Not a land. I've stood outside of my car at a gas station and stared off into space a lot in Bakersfield <laughs> in my life. You keep bringing up Bakersfield. You're like, it's your home away from home. It's just a good place for reflection. Okay. Okay. So you've done that drive, yeah? So many times. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I actually that. drove. I almost drove Ben Sec mad on that drive. We went up to San Jose to play in a PTQ. Yep. As you do. Eight-hour drive or whatever. Yeah, as you do. Terrible. And on the way back, he's like, yo, I'm too exhausted. Can you drive? I'm like, no problem. It's dark by this point. Stop at a gas station, get a cup of coffee. First stop, they got CDs. And uh, TBS's car has a CD player in it. So I buy the Allman Brother Band's album, uh, I think Brothers and Sisters. It's the one with Rambling Man on it. Anyway, the album's short. So every half an hour or so, TBS wakes up to the start of Rambling Man because the CD is just playing on loop. And he looks around, and we're in Northern California where there's the scenery never changes. Yeah. And after, like, four or five times, and he's, like, starting – it's starting to, like, chip away at his sanity. I can tell he thinks he's, he's trapped in some sort of loop. He's like, can you please just turn that off? And I did, and then he went back to bed. <laughs> Once upon a time revealed a tireless tracker. <laughs> a forest, a boreal grazer, simic grill chamber, now that forest – will be replayed, and now the tireless tracker is on the battlefield. So you drove Ben crazy is the moral of the story. Yeah. That drive is not good. It's not mm. good. I like drives that give me some time to think. Las, Las Vegas to Los Angeles, mm -hmm. like that drive. Yeah. Not a lot going on. <laughs>
here's Once Upon a Time for free for Matthew Dilks. Abandoned water park on the side of the highway. Love that. Is that in, the, <laughs> in the middle of Cal the desert in California. It looks extremely haunted. <laughs> and uh, it's another spot where I've done some reflection. Good, good. It's good to, it's good to reflect. Yeah, it's good to reflect. It's good. Abandoned water park, huh? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to call it. It looks like someone had a business idea that went awry. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so secure a tribe scout here for Dilks. He's got a snow-covered mountain of his own along with a gemstone mine. Three mining counters. Misty Rainforest here will bring a clue along with it, thanks to the tireless tracker. Zach Allen kind of hitting the SED tour last year, decided to dedicate some time and effort to it. Had a heck of a year qualifying for the Players' Championship as he'll just pass the turn back. Maybe a little surprised to see no attack or anything. Hmm. Huh. Oh, there's an amulet. And that resolves right away. Yeah, the uh, the just say go there is curious. Dilk's going to play Castle Garenbrig. I mean, the thing that's so silly about this deck is, let's see, so if he played a bounce land, he'd have two, three, so he'd be short. And instead, he's just going to pass. All right. Zach Allen's going to sacrifice a Misty Rainforest. Fall down to 19 at least. And that means another clue is almost certainly on the way. Again, Edgar Harlan. Harlan in the lead. Pulliam, Jessup, Pulliam in the lead. We'll keep our eyes on each of those matches. And with any luck, we'll have time to jump that way. But we wanted to put the attention here on one of the SD Tour favorites mm -hmm. here in Matthew Dilks. So, some cards drawn, and we head back over to Allen. Explore. All right. That is Verdant Catacombs. Clue. This is a field of the nope. Ooh. Field of ruin. Clue. Can we get busy here? Oh. Didn't last time. You know how I felt about Malvin. I mean, there's clearly a reason. He's He's way too smart. I guess I guess it's a, a way to try to trade off with the Primeval Titan if he just has everything. I don't know. There's nothing that that Dilks really has that punishes an attacker, so it's got to be a blocking consideration. So last turn. So okay. So on Zach's most recent turn that he took, I would agree with you because it's five power. The turn previous the to that, though, right? It was a clean hit. Yeah, it was just, it was a clean shot to get in a couple points of damage. Here's another amulet. So, trying to understand the reason behind the no attacks here is difficult. Is now there is that second amulet. Now here's a gruel turf. And you see the reason that Dilts is waiting is because the trigger goes on the stack, and Zach Allen can respond with a field of the dead activation. If you'd like. Excuse me, Field of Ruin activation. I keep confusing the two. All right, Gruel Turf is untapped, float. Second amulet trigger, float. So two red, two green. Zuza. 
mana floating. Presumably a green. Field of the dead. Two triggers. It's all body language, baby. It's so good. Yeah. It's so good. <laughs> Everything from the demeanor to the comments to the play is just, it is high art. <laughs> it is, yeah, I don't even know. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to think on this a little bit. <laughs> Try to come up with the right comparison. Maybe we need to take a drive to Bakersfield. Yeah, think yeah. about think yeah. about yeah. it. Maybe think about that. Bakersfield. Little trip. Little trip. So while Zach Allen is tapped out, I'm gonna sneak in a gruel turf, picking up Castle Garenbrig. Okay. Mm. Interesting little play there. I feel like I'm learning so much. Yeah, there's a lot of little just There's like a bunch of little things that are going on. Usually we watch this deck and it's just on either cru it's on cruise control one or the other. It's got nothing going on or it's quickly assembling these kills. But these games have been instructive insofar as you're seeing a lot of sort of secondary tertiary interactions that come up with some of your weird lands. It's uh -huh. cool. Yeah. All right, three mana. Nope, just kidding. Ashiok. Okay. That's a real thing. That changes the landscape. With the works gummed up here, it takes a lot of sting out of Primeval Titan. Stapping oh, out. Oh, oh. Yep. wow. Dilk's rules. He rules. Wow. Of course he's beat. Of course he's beat in that spot. His Primeval Titan's not worth anything, and he can't do anything about the Tireless Tracker. Of course he's beat. And he's not wasting anyone's time with it. Why embarrass himself on camera? Why let Alan just just bounce the ball off his forehead for <laughs> ten minutes? Why? Just concede. Awesome. Which 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 he did. Yeah. 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 You and you out there and you coming to these events, you could do the same thing. <laughs> you can do the same thing. All right. That was that was faster Here's than I expected. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is nice. Hold on. Hang on. Hang okay. on. Hold that thought. Update that scoreboard, intern Rob. Hit me with it. Harlan Fear, 2-0 over Edrew Magyash. Gets a little revenge there. And so, predictably, just like we set it up when we set up our final match, it comes down to Dilks versus Allen. Can we learn a little bit about Zach Allen? We got a slide for him. We better. Otherwise, Miller's going to get it. I'll actually be the one apologizing to Nick. Mm -hmm, That's mm -hmm. what is what I'm implying. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd be apologizing. Uh, we're having an issue. Intern Rob is having a dexterity issue right now. Okay. Here's what I can tell you about Zach. He's from Michigan, and he's really good. Outside of Detroit, associated with RIW Hobbies, a landmark store for American Magic. So many great competitive players have come out of there over the years. And who Patrick Sullivan would pick first – on his team, had he needed to assemble someone for a fight? Yeah, we talked about our players. Yeah, we talked about we had a lot of what we had a lot of what would happen if you were drafting the players championship competitors, but for a fight. And so everyone's clear. Everyone, the players championship was in on the conversation. Zach Allen, number some one. some more than others. Zach Allen, yes. number one overall pick in a landslide. I don't know about a landslide. I think so. I don't know. Chris Brown looks like he can handle himself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. I like Chris Barone. Yeah, I liked him too. He was fun. He was cool. In between rounds, just like reading a book or doing whatever his studies. Yeah. Just low key. Looks like he can handle himself. And he told me in high school and college he wrestled. So Chris Barone. Yeah. I you two could. Me. You two could throw down. 
Uh, yeah, we could. Yeah, we could. Scrap, as it were. No, Spar. I'm saying wrestle. That, that's you what have I mean. a, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You two have a, the same wrestling background. Yeah. I knew I liked him. For it all. Dilks, Allen, Dilks on the play. He hates his hands. <laughs> Anyhow, back to the conceding conversation real quick. Yeah, sure. It's particularly relevant as long as Oko stays legal because that card, more than maybe, maybe any other powerful card that's shown up in Magic's history, oh, yeah. your draw step won't help you. There's that's nothing true. that's not going to change. That's, true. that's the thing. When you're behind, when it's invalidating your permanence, whatever the case is, mm -hmm. it's not like you're going to draw a card that's going to change it. It doesn't work that way. Not with Oko. That's part of the, you know, it's part of the issue with the design is the helplessness it inspires, the implication that your draw step no longer matters in terms of determining the shape of the game or giving you any sense that a comeback is possible. Or at least the game could feel different, even if you don't come back and ultimately win. So just move on to the next game that might not involve that card on the other side of the table. There it is. There it is. There it is. Dilks, a master. You watch him. I want you to put down your phone and get off of Twitter and pick up a notepad and start taking some notes. Because you are seeing high performance. Yes, you are. High performance. From both players. Yes. Allen's just playing good, solid magic. Whatever. Seen it, seen it a million times. Seen it a million more times. Dilks, he's letting you in on the craft. Mm -hmm. All right. Both players, I believe, are happy on their – well, Dilks is happy with his six. We'll see if Zach has found the card he wants to put on the bottom. If you win, if you had the chance to go back in time and watch Mozart compose the symphony – would you bring a notebook? Yeah. Yes. You'd take some notes. You'd want to remember the experience. Here is a Sakura Tribe Scout. You are ridiculous. We could be minutes away from, from Matthew Dilks winning this event and not caring. That's just, yeah. Being mad he showed up. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's very true. <laughs> Nick Miller spoke with him a little bit earlier in the tournament. Uh and he asked if he was going to Knoxville, and he said no. And then at round 13, he asked, are you going to go to Knoxville? And he said, if I, if I make top four. Uh -huh. So he'll be around to ruin everyone's weekend yeah. next weekend as well. There's a Castle Garen Brig. I like it. Serve it up. Give him a little taste. All right, he's going he's gonna to sack his tribe scout. So Dilks have a follow-up here. How awesome would it be to just crumble to dust that field of the dead? Be sick. Crumble to dust needs to make a comeback. Sowing salt, whatever. No, no, no. Give me crumbling, crumble to dust. Dokes will pass. We're going back over to Allen. There it is. There it is. Devoid has no color. Don't lie to me. I can tell you. I can tell it does have a color. Don't lie to me. Looks Anyhow, like I keep reading. <laughs> take care. Still take care of a non-basic. That's what it'll do. All of them. Yeah. Secure a tribe, elder. Field of the dead number two. Back to Dilks. Dilks needs a land. I think that's pretty clear. Yeah, you don't see a whole lot of Sakura Tribe Scouts being used in this fashion this early in the game. Yep. Block and sack. All right. Looks like he might have a tracker in his hand. 
tough thing here for Dilks. He doesn't have blue mana either in case, like, Mystical, just, like, some, some sort of anything right now. I don't really have a great idea of what's in his hand, but he's just going to pass the turn back again. I guess he does have blue mana. Gemstone might ignore me. I mean, it's just got to be an issue with mana, right? Uh, one more land unlocks a lot of different things, and mm -hmm. he's been attacking with his Secure Tribe Scout. So. There's a Cavern of Souls on Giants for Primeval Titan. We have five different land types. Zach Allen is starting to pull away. And the tough thing there for Dilks is if he plays the Tireless Tracker, he puts the shields down on Mystical Dispute, but by playing, by not playing it, he's prepared to counter Primeval Titan, except for Cavernous Souls, blew that whole plan up. Yep. <laughs> not thrilled. Not thrilled. Sitting, having to sit here through the other team talking about their just load of good options here. I don't know. Zach Allen's played himself a nice, uh, a nice match of magic here, which is what you'd expect. For sure. From Zach. I know we like to have fun talking about Matthew Dilks because he's one of our personalities. Rising personality of the SEG Tour. I can, that's a good way to describe it. Zach Allen is a little more mild-mannered, but he can he can cast spells just as well. Nah, Zach's got a little Zach's got a little pop to him. Well, he doesn't show it on the camera. No, not so much. No, he's got a little. In the same way that Dilks does, we'll head back over to Dilks, who really needs to draw something that matters right now. Pact of negate. Oh, sorry, that was a. I think that may have been an amulet, amulet of vigor. Yeah. Like you can't afford to fall too far behind in this matchup. If you do, it's over immediately. Yeah, and there's a burden on Dilks in these games, I think, to play ahead in general. Yep. The longer the game goes on, I think, just the better it is for Allen in general. So him falling behind is really catastrophic. And Dilks can only pass the turn back now, too. So we head back over to Allen, who's got an active primeval evil titan. Field of the Dead, plural, are online. Explore in hand as well. And it looks like we are not too far away from Zach Allen putting a wrap on this tournament for him and his team. And if that's true, I'll say this. First of all, congrats to the entire team, but welcome back, Danny Jessup. I know, a player who, well, you know, we'll see how this weekend goes. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I'll go to the first couple ones, and if it's good, then I'm, I'm back on it. And if not, then, you know, probably won't play that much this year. Yep. I think he'll be back on it. Already talked to Jessup a little bit this weekend, said he's not going to be able to attend season two. Sure. Yeah, yeah, So you got to get it done now. So he's if he wants to qualify for the Players' Championship, which he wants to again, he said, i got to do it in season one. This would be a hell of a way to start, win or lose. Three zombies, as Vesuva is going to copy Field of the Dead. Prime time and zombies. Trigger prime time. Zach Allen's probably thinking to himself, I get to do just all of this? I mean, you have nothing? So, Dilks has had nothing for no lands and nothing to do for a couple turns now. So. Yeah. Pretty face up what his hand must be. Just the amount of surprise, perhaps, where... There's another Field of the Dead in the Cavern of Souls. This cavern is on Beast, perhaps, for the old hoof. See where Allen wants to go next. It'll be Oko. I think Dilks may have one more draw step left. There's the mystical dispute he's been holding for some time. <laughs> That'll be a single blue. Yeah. yeah. That's countered. Glad you glad you got I'm glad you got enjoyed that. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. 
Just when I think it, just when I thought I couldn't get any better. Yeah. Here's Explore. <laughs> <laughs> Breeding pool. Four more zombies. Your turn. All right. Big, big draw step. I'm going to go with big draw step. That's it. Zach Allen. Harlan Fear. Danny Jessup, they are your champions here in our first open of the decade. And